Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, I need to make a birthday present for my friend Oliver. And uh, because of a little bit of ADHD procrastination, I'm a teeny tiny bit behind schedule. The birthday is on the 11th and it's currently the 29th. And also we are moving on the 14th, which I know I just threw a lot of numbers at you, but it means I don't have a lot of time to get this done. And uh, if I don't, Oliver doesn't get a birthday present and I don't have a video to post whilst in the middle of moving. So uh, let's get a move on. Fortunately, I'm a good friend and I listen to my friends so I know exactly what Oliver wants. They claim to watch my YouTube channel, but they only ever reference one very specific video and they've also asked me for that one specific thing multiple times over and for whatever reason it's the uh, Alan Pan talking toilet project. I don't know why but if you're not familiar let me explain. A while ago Alan Pan presented a very interesting hypothetical scenario where there are two toilets. One of them really wants you to relieve yourself into it, the other one really doesn't want you to and your choice which one you go with whether you want it to scream at you to stop or whether you want it to scream at you to keep going. Well, sadly, I didn't have two separate toilets to do this experiment with, so instead I made a device that attaches to the toilet and picks a personality when you open the lid. The way I had this working in the original version is I had an IR distance sensor on the back of the toilet that would detect when you opened or closed the lid, which would send a signal to the ESP32 which would then decide which personality to give you. I then had a com capacitive touch sensor on the lid that would detect whether you've sat down or not, again playing the corresponding message. Uh, in reality that kept falling off because it was blue tacked on and uh, the distance between the capacitive touch sensor and the ESP32 muttered a lot more than I expected and I didn't like the audio effects board I was using because it was annoying. I had to have a GPIO for each of the sounds I wanted to play. It was just a pain and I'm pretty sure it ran off of two separate power supplies. Needless to say I have learned a lot since then and I know how to get this done a lot better. So let me explain how, right after this message from my sponsor. JLC PCB, with 19 years of experience and five state-of-the-art factories, it's no wonder that over 5.4 million engineers across 180 plus countries rely on their reliable and affordable services. Getting started is easy. Simply upload your Gerber files, get an instant quote, and place your order within minutes. It's just that easy. Whether you're prototyping or producing in volume, JLC PCB offers unbeatable pricing with one to eight layer PCB starting from just $2. But it's not just affordability, JLC PCB delivers premium quality with lightning turnaround times. Your boards can be ready within as little as 24 hours. All thanks to their fully in-house production process which ensures quality control at every stage. And right now there's an exclusive offer where you can get 6 layer PCBs for just $5 with $30 off of your first order. If you're ready to take your electronic projects to the next level, visit JLC PCB. During the break, I think I figured out most of the components I want to use for this project. Also, I'm gonna to try to get through this really fast because boy, is it humid in here. So first of all, we need a microcontroller. I'm going to be using this ESP32C3 Beetle from DF Robot. It has USB-C, it has a single capacitive touch pin, and it has a battery charge circuit for LiPo and lithium ion batteries. So I can just plug in a battery to this and then just plug it in every so often to charge it up. For the actual voice uh, of the toilet, I'm going to be using this uh, voice prompter module again from DF Robot. I have a full video on this, but it's an MP3 player, speaker, and an amplifier all in one package. You just upload whatever files you want to play on it and then through UART, through the ESP, you tell it which file you want to play. So like these two alone are like 90% of the project. Uh, I'm also adding a bigger switch. This is the biggest one I have so that it's very easy for Oliver's partner to turn it on and off. Uh, depending if he wants to listen to the toilet moan or not. And I'm also going to be adding this uh, photoresistor that will be the thing I use to detect whether the lid is open and closed. So the idea is that I have like a, like a case that kind of slides on here with like prongs that will uh, hold the toilet seat and on that we'll have a photoresistor that will tell it if the lid's open or closed and I'll also have a thin strip of copper tape that will tell it whether somebody has sat on it or not. So yeah, those will just be like hanging out here, like so-ish, 
with the battery and all that, like that. And hopefully that does the job I need it to do in a nice, neat package. Um, right, I'm gonna go and put these on a breadboard and uh, we'll catch up after that's done. Sorry, I'm measuring my face so I can figure out uh, how many centimeters between my ears is wasted space. So it turns out that the ESP32C3 that I was planning to use for this project doesn't actually have capacitive Taj hardware or software. I thought it did because when I went onto the wiki page for the ESP32C3 and then clicked Control F and looked for Taj, it came out with a table that said ESP32C3 pins pin free touch. So I thought, great, I can just solder on a cute little wire to it and it's gonna, you know, feel when I touch it. Unfortunately, if I scrolled ever so slightly up, I'd notice that this was in reference to the cable that plugs a screen to the ESP32. So I had to go looking for a different microcontroller. Luckily, in my stash, I had a Beetle CM32 the U4, which is just an Arduino Leonardo, but in a nice small package. And also it has the same kind of battery charge circuit. Also, DF Robot does a really nice job with like most of these to have the pins in like relatively the same space. So it was basically just a drop in replacement for everything I set up on the breadboard, which is great. Thank you, DF Robot. So that's what I've got set up. And Arduino has a library for capacitive touch sensing, which works really well with my specific Leonardo. So I've got it set up to sense the light and the touch. So currently the light sensor, the number is high. And if I cover it, the number is low. That's how you know it works. And then I've got the touch pin, which is currently on minus two, but when I touch it, number goes up. And then when I let go, number goes back down. So that works pretty much perfectly. Yes, the numbers do float a little bit, but I'm pretty much just gonna set a hard threshold for that. So uh, right now I need to just attach the speaker and hopefully get it to play sounds when I either cover the light or touch that. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so it's been seven hours and it, not because I'm lazy and it this didn't take me seven hours to do, it's, there's a heat wave, I'm very hot, I don't want to do any work. Also, we've been working on getting stuff for the new place and it's getting expensive, so uh, please support me on Patreon or like and subscribe, that also helps. Anywho, I've got this set up with a very basic sketch in if a thing happens, play sound, and it's currently still got the sounds from the pumpkin video I made last October. Uh, but yeah, if I touch that, did I just say, do not come any closer? It plays a sound, and if I show it some, Stay where you are. Do not approach. it does that. Um, so it works. The basic logic is there. What I have to do now is like come up with like dialogue options and make sure you know it does one thing after the other in the right order so uh, i'm gonna go write some things for it to say and then get a some kind of text-to-speech model to record them and all that so see you in however many hours or days that takes i got kind of sidetracked with moving and seeing the new place and if you're interested in seeing the new place uh, mellow labs 3.0 uh, it's up on patreon i've got a whole tour if you're interested in that please support me i definitely need the support so i have like four days before i have to give this to oliver and it's still on the breadboard and i don't have the code and i don't have the things that it's going to say out loud so i really need to like adhd hyper fixate on this today and get it done and i'm out of coffee so I'm basically raw dogging this video. I'm not saying that in the video. I'm just hyperfixation. Okay, so I have a lot to catch you up on. So first of all, uh, instead of immediately hyperfixating, I went to the store and got coffee. So then when I came back, I was caffeinated and then I hyperfixated and I got a lot of it done. So first of all, 
I got the I got the script written for the audio files, and then I used well GPT helped me to actually write them. I'm on a time crunch, um, <laughs> and then I just used a regular TTS to read them out. It doesn't quite have the right inflections for things, but it works just about right, and I can swap them out in the future. There's two personalities. They have two folders each. One of them for like the initial response when you open the lid, and then one for when you sit down. Um, so I got that working. Then I connected the. I got the code running properly, uh, so that works in the correct order and everything. I then connected the battery to the microcontroller to actually, you know, run it off of the battery power, and it works. With a little caveat, I had a 1M resistor on the touch pin connecting it to ground, and for some reason that didn't work properly with the battery, so I just removed the uh, resistor and then it worked completely fine, so I'm just not running a resistor on it. I then hyperfixated even more in Fusion and designed a box. So this is the box that's going to hold the speaker, the microcontroller, the battery, and, you know, the wires in between. Oh, and the switch goes on the side here. And I've got nice little vent holes for the speaker. Lovely. And then this bit will kind of go on here, and then this bit goes on here, so that we put the touch sensor and the IR, not IR, the light sensor on here. So that's going to go like that, and hopefully that's going to, like slide onto the lid. I'm not quite sure what the distance is going to be between here. Actually, it goes this way around. I'm not quite sure what the distance is going to be between here, so I'm just going to glue it in place when I figure out what the right distance is. But hopefully, with that little bump here, gives me enough force to like, uh, you know, so that it holds itself onto the lid. So now, I just need to assemble it. Um, let's do it. All my homies hate capacitive touch because floating grounds on battery power are just too annoying. I do not have ceramic capacitors, I couldn't make it work, so instead we're changing the strategy a bit. Instead of using capacitive touch, I am now using resistive sensing. So um, it actually works pretty well. So uh, I've, I had to add a secondary pad to the top, which is honestly fine because there's enough surface area to support to but now if I turn it on the blue LED is off so you know it turned on and now if I uh, touch it it turns the LED on see how well that works on battery power isn't that amazing I have been screwing around with capacitive touch for like four hours now and my god do I not like battery powered capacitive touch things anymore? Um, but yeah, this works really well. So um, I'm switching to resistance sensing. Um, it's honestly just one extra wire, so I'm not too annoyed about it. I'm just annoyed about how long it took me to get to the solution. So uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap this wire in through there. I'm going to center, well not center, I'm going to it, I'm gonna make this look pretty and it's gonna be good come back in I added the second line I wired everything nicely so that's it's going into the box so now if I turn it on the little blue LED will go off when it's ready to be used if I open this now oh, not again seriously you can't keep doing this to me and now go look this is my worst nightmare make it stop yeah it's gross but it works. I'm not fully trusting the randomness. Come on, buddy. My porcelain's craving that special splash only you can provide. Splush. You spoil me. Seriously. That was incredible. Okay, yeah, the randomness does work. Fantastic. So now I can, uh, well, I need to, I think, hot glue the, the microcontroller in place and then I can put the lid on. I changed my mind. I'm not using hot glue. I'm actually just going to use, uh, I've got some free M pads that I basically never use. I save them for a special occasion. I'm going to claim this as a special occasion and use the M free sticky pads. Wow, that actually, never mind. Attempt number two. That's a good enough fit. I'm probably going to put like tape on here to hold it together. I should have really like had a screw to like hold this together but uh, I'm on a time crunch which I'm starting to think is more of an excuse than justification uh, right let me I guess test this on the toilet 
Okay, this isn't a permanent installation. This is an installation for testing. So I'm going to attach it with some blue tack. That should go on there, which is enough to like, you know, when you're sitting down so that your fire like touches it, right? Cool. So now I close the lid, I turn it on. Not again, seriously. You can't keep doing this to me. Go blue. This is my worst nightmare. Make it stop. <laughs> it's you again. Ready to make my day. Okay, well that was clearly a bug with me uncovering the sensor, but that's fine. Brent, seat's nice and warm for you. Yeah, come on. Don't keep me waiting. Glug glug. Man, nobody does it quite like you. Thanks. Oh, not again, seriously. You can't keep doing this to me. Okay, so we need it to not pick another personality after you get up from the toilet. So maybe add like a delay after the touch sensor has been released for it to actually pick another personality so that you have enough time to like close the lid. Okay, cool. Hey, listen, I just cleaned myself. Okay, well, maybe shut come up. back later. Cool. Uh, yeah, let's fix some bugs. Right, so it took a little longer than I expected, but I have got it figured out. It will no longer pick a personality when you get up from the toilet. Uh, the last things to do is to glue this on, but I'm gonna have to do that at Oliver's. Uh, just like when I get to the party, I'll just go straight to the bathroom with a concealed bottle of super glue, and I'll glue this on so that it matches their, the thickness of their toilet seat, and it will just slide on perfectly. Uh, and the last thing to do is actually, I don't quite like how I've got the uh, microcontroller in here. Like the, the USB kind of doesn't give me a lot of faith. So I'm just gonna super, not super glue, I'm gonna hot glue it in place. So I'm waiting for that to heat up. Now, I would love to get Oliver's reaction to this, but I don't know if they're comfortable with that. So maybe at the end of this video, we will get Oliver's reaction. It will be after the credit sequence because there's always something after the credit sequence, uh, but if not, then that's it. So let me glue this on and I'll do my outro. Yeah, that feels a lot more secure. Okay, let's give this a go. I'm gonna cover up the light sensor so it thinks the lid is closed. So now if we uncover the sensor. Hey, listen, I just cleaned myself. Maybe come back later. Wash splutter. Oh, the horror. I'll never recover from this. Hey, it worked. So now we close the lid. You're finally Yay! Here. I've been looking forward to this all day. Okay, I no longer wish to listen to you. Okay, so I guess with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Support me on Patreon if you can. And say goodbye to Mellow Labs 2.5. And I'll see you in 3.0.